ahead and start recording because I think this is fun. <laughs> okay, do you okay. see? Uh, I, I made it's my nose still really bleeding. Loud, oh, loud. that's what you did. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. There, no, better. but it was on turn. No, you look good. Wonderful. <coughs> okay, don't cough like that. If you do go far away from the microphone. Oh, okay. I was like, I, was like, I, I don't know what to tell you. I have corona. <laughs> Do you really? No, I'm kidding. We both got tested. Then we're both yeah, negative. I got tested like a week ago. PCR it's fine. Hold on. I was worried hmm? about them being... PCR or antibody? PCR. Oh, they do both with the one that I did. Huh. They don't. You got a finger stick in the... Yeah. Hello, hello, okay, hello. Okay, well, we went in the same no, place. Your mic's so. not on. Your not mic's not on. Um, yeah, now that's better. I feel like you're trying. about to scat. Keep talking. <sighs> Take a shit. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Go away, fly. Yeah, Should hold on. Don't bother me. Why do we hear? I see it, but I don't hear it. Hold on, guys. One more thing to try and figure hold. out. Hold. Check. One, two. One, Holding. two. Three. One. Three. One. Hello. 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 Yeah, I guess if you just talk into it, it is there. Hold on, let me just try yeah, one more thing. I get real intimate with that. Just give it a little... Check <laughs> one. Four, I wouldn't like that. Four. Check Double one. Oh, check, 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 check. <laughs> one, two, 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 two. Oh, there's too much space on it. Check one, two, 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 two. I was like, what kind two, of two, two, this? Two. It felt Here. like it was foam. Oh, is it? Hello, no, hello. I mean, it looked oh. like it was foam. Hold it. The feeling did not apply. Talk, like, like actually but into it, though. I was like, it definitely doesn't like look me? like foam. Hello? No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, your laugh, is, your laugh is gonna be a problem. Hold on. Oh my goodness gracious. Hold on, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask you a big favor, which is that when you laugh, you're mm -hmm. gonna have to back away from the microphone a little bit. How far? Oh. Should we do a sound <laughs> test for that? <laughs> yes, that's okay. Wait, like is that. this okay, okay. far enough? So you just get a little bit of an ab workout in every time you laugh. Oh, there. I can turn them down a little like this. That's better. And now you. Yeah, it's or equidistant. It's radially symmetric out from the microphone. It's radially there. symmetric. But it has Check a band one, around two, it, so two. It can't be perfect. So I lied. Oh. I probably lied about that. Yeah. It used to be a morning show that we were doing. Now it's an afternoon show. You can't tell from the ambient light. Are we going to go to the land of make believe? What about yes. the train? <laughs> this is great. Train? This is a lot of fun. I like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a science and comedy the show. I, That's what he would do. He'd be like, the land of make And then he would send the train and it would go in and then they cut and then all of a sudden they'd be land of make believe where everybody's puppets. <laughs> okay, I'd like you to come around a little closer to me. No, just scoot your chair up a little bit and come even closer if you can. There. Let me see how that looks. Ugod. Lovely. Why, oh God? Oh, I just almost fell off to my Okay. Head. And then yes. I want to. Should I point the microphone? I mean, their camera just a little lower. So that they're a little higher up in the frame? No. Where's no, the camera? Yeah. You think so? This little thing with the light. Yes. You mean so we're all at the same kind of uh, horizontal? Yeah, look. That's yeah, OK, fine. Should I check my glasses off? Okay. In fact, no, and even fine. ours should do the same thing so yeah. that we're just a teeny bit. Yeah. And now I want to just try and get this. I'll be honest, I get Mr. Rogers lamb chop and what was the other one? Don't remember reading lamb rainbow. Chop. Mm. I don't remember lamb chop. I don't remember lamb chop, but I do remember <sighs> reading rainbow. Maybe that's why I'm not that racist. Wasn't the guy Okay, that's much better. Oh, yeah, I like yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, lamb chop I feel like Talk? was somebody on a lot of yeah. cocaine was like, Ooh, oh, you got good sound. Yep, yep, yep. Now they're got to be louder. <laughs> the wiggles when they laugh, it bad. just gets really loud. What the fuck <laughs> is the wiggles? We just won't make them laugh. Okay, but everybody knows yeah, right. the song fruit salad. <laughs> Fruit salad. We need okay. that kind of dynamic. Try and yummy. Yeah, we're, they have we're, such rapport. Fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> yummy, yummy. I don't remember the rest of it. Yeah, and we're live. Nobody knows. That's all the words. I'm pretty sure that's all the words. Will you, will you guys introduce yourselves and tell us uh, where we are and how you ended up here? Oh, is this happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're recording. <laughs> um, we're she can start. Uh, I'm Jordan. I am an automation engineer uh, for a biotech company. Um, we ended up here because it was my birthday in quarantine. Um, yeah, and I was really sad that I was just going to be sitting alone at home with my roommate's dog crying and watching Netflix. So I thought, why not look on Airbnb and try and find something better to do? Um, so now we're in the desert where she's holding my dog and crying and watching Netflix. <laughs> 
Which show are you in the middle of? <laughs> oh, so many. Honestly, right now I'm rewatching Criminal Minds because every time I'm sad, I watch a lot of like crime shows. But which season are you on? Right now I'm on season one. Okay, well, so good then. Yeah, it hasn't Wait, but have you weird. seen the later seasons? No, actually. Don't. Okay. <laughs> are you sad because you don't know how old exactly you are? You get a you get a little bonus year, right? Oh yes, yeah. Sorry, it's a little quiet. If you could just scream it directly into my. <laughs> no, so tell us. You got a bonus year. <laughs> my bonus year. Yes, I thought I was turning thirty this year because I thought I was twenty nine all of last year. Um, Did you really? I really thought I was twenty nine all of last year, and the year before that, I think I still thought I was twenty six. So it was like I lost a lot of years You're thinking that I was. <laughs> I am both dumb and a hoe. To be fair, she did think that I was 16 <laughs> when I was 18. I mean, I guess that's not that far off, but like that means you thought I was five years younger than you versus three years younger than you. Well, you, you, well, you probably didn't know how old you were. Maybe she didn't know how old she was oh, either. Oh, that's true. No, that's she knew fair. how old she was, but she did think I was 18 when I turned 21. And then we like went to, I like, she saw me with a beer and she was like, what the fuck are you doing with that? She was like, she was like, I saw you with a beer. She was like, mom and dad never let me drink. By the way, we're sisters. <laughs> That's right. I feel like we picked up on that at this point, but like maybe if you didn't. Right. Um, and yeah. then it just turned out that it was actually legal for me and nobody could complain about it. That's fair. That does make a lot of sense for why they would allow you to be drinking. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, as an engineer, you would think numbers would be more her strong suit. But yeah. How do you do that? Numbers? Yeah. A lot of Googling. A lot of Googling? Yeah. The the computers. the computers do it. I actually don't use a lot of numbers for my job. Well, the Can you explain your job? Because I, I, you said something that a lot of people might go over their head, including me. Yeah. So explain what it is. Yes. So I work for a biotech company. Uh, so a lot of assays in biology are typically run by hand. Uh. <laughs> What's an assay? <laughs> Uh, an assay is like an ex- <laughs> no, that's not what it is. <laughs> it's like an experiment essentially, uh, and so you would um, like in biology, a lot of experiments have like pipettes, which is like a little liquid handler, where you can like measure exact amounts of liquids and transfer them around really easily, uh, and you can do like really small amounts. Um, and so what I do is essentially translating all of those manual things using robots so that it's like faster people can like do more interesting science instead of just like trying to figure out how fast they can like pipette 300 tubes into like 300 wells um yeah i know a fun fact about pipetting absolutely so uh, this is also a fun fact about just like the different safety standards internationally but so i mean (laughs) you you have taught let oh i I'm a PhD student in chemistry, so I also know stuff about labs and ass as no. Um, but I already forgot what I was going to talk about. Pipettes. Pipettes. Yeah. So this bitch is talking about a band called using, the Pipettes. She's using like micro pipettes where you like literally calibrate the pipette to set the volume that you want, and you press the button and it sucks up the ideal volume that you want, and then you just like put it in like this other thing. It's there's like this weird double double like. When you push it down, like that's good, but then if you push it down a second time, it fucks everything up and it's very easy to do. So I think that's poor design. But anyway, that's what we do here and you have to wear like latex gloves or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was visiting the University of Minnesota and there was a postdoc there from India. Do they still mouth pipette? They mouth pipette! And he was talking about, okay, so he What does that mean to mouth pipette? So mouth pipette, so so a regular pipette, so this is like a high (laughs) pipette, not a high, like- Wait, what's a pipette first? Back up, back up, what's a pipette? It's a pipe. Okay. But tiny. A small, oh, see, we do have that in English. Yes, et. I don't know if that's an English word. It's not. So an areola is actually would be an ariette. Yes. Yeah, because we looked up earlier the etymology of areola because cacti, it turns out, have areola yeah. and it just means a small area. Areola, Latin is, is for area, which is All an right. air, a, a, a space for things to happen. And the fibers change in that area. So I said, well, in, in Italian, you have ina and ona for small and big. And we said we didn't have that in English, but then you just figured out that we do. Pipette Pipet. is a little pipe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So how you ever want to make people think you're gonna tell a joke, but then actually you just give them a piece of a piece of information? Just ask them, uh, 
why are a cacti and a human breast alike? Oh. And the answer is they both have areola. It's kind of a joke. I mean, it's not it's, really a joke. It's, no, it's only true. funny because it involves nipples. But why is that funny? Nipples are funny. Why are nipples funny? Have you seen a nipple? I don't know. Male <laughs> nipples are funny because they don't do anything. Like, they do. They I'm don't. Like, some of them are why like do you have tic tacs. I always wonder. I don't know. Why, why is male cosmetic surgery to remove the nipples not a thing? Wait, no, okay, it's not cosmetic surgery. It's like a body modification, but some people do actually remove their nipples. And do they suffer any consequences? I did not Google that far. I was just Googling, okay, because when I was like 18, I saw that you could like do that thing where you like split your tongue in half, and I thought it would be really cool. So I was Googling a lot about that, and then I saw that people were removing their nipples as a body modification. And Men or women? Or both? I only saw men. Yeah. But I I feel like that's like a toxic masculinity thing. Like, they're like, I'm so much a man, I don't even need nipples. <laughs> they just rip it off with their bare hands. <laughs> they just like a bear claw over it. They're like, a bear ripped it off. And you're like, no, sir, I saw you with, <laughs> with sterilized scissors. But you can say it's a bear if you want. But you know what? Scissors would be terrible for that. Do you remember the show <laughs> Kyle XY? Is that? No one fucking watched it. But it was the one where the dude didn't have a belly button because he was a clone. Oh, I was thinking of Ben 10 where he, like, turns into different things. No. Different. Great show. Watch that one. Yeah. Kyle XY was not an animated television show for children, but it was instead... Live action. It was a live... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it look real when he didn't have a belly button? I mean, like, no. Okay. <laughs> but, like, that's because nobody doesn't have a belly button. Anyway, the point of bringing this up was simply that he had nipples. I mean, I guess you would if you cloned it. Like, if you would have to clone it, but if we're, we're but if we're removing nipples. useless body parts, like you don't need a belly button, but you don't okay, need. Okay, wait, but now I have questions about when they were cloning him. How were they feeding him? Because don't you get your nutrients through the umbilical cord? So did he not go through the normal stages of like human development? Again, I did not watch the show, so I do not know <laughs> if that was covered. But I, I mean, questions. I guess they could just shove needles into him, like they do everything. When he's else. like a little like ball of cells, like a little. That's like, what you do with cells. You don't put the needles into them. You put well, them in like media, and they just I like, mean, could, like absorb it. If you had an artificial placenta, you might not need to be fed through the umbilical cord, right? You could just kind of inhale. Well, the it. placenta is, is attached. The, attached to the umbilical cord. Yeah. yeah. That's how the umbilical... Well, no, the umbilical cord is to the bloodstream of the mother. Well, it goes through the placenta, right? Yes. Because you don't want to have, like, direct, like, blood to blood. My Irish ex-girlfriend's uh, mother had taken the placenta and used it in a potted plant, which was a thing they do in Ireland, I guess, and, and the plant supposedly grew like no plant had ever grown before. That makes sense. There's hell a lot of nutrients in there. Yeah. Apparently, when Some people, people eat them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some people eat people, so. <laughs> That's also eating people. <laughs> I mean, no. It's technically eating, like, the. It's the eating a human byproduct. Of a human? No. Well, it's, it's like, like drinking milk. Yeah. A placenta? Oh, it's like a nutritional period. It's like a period with nutritional yeast sprinkled on top of purpose. <laughs> I don't like to think of yeast being anywhere near my uterus. <laughs> I don't know understand why anyone eats nutritional yeast. It does actually taste kind of like cheese, and I do enjoy that. It looks like Vegemite, but, like, drier. Yeah. I mean, does it kind of taste like it, too? I don't know. I've never tried it. So, last night, in the hot tub, one of you was on the left side, kind of at the corner, and the other was on the right left from which side Do you uh, know which from one? my subjective perspective which and which side of us were you on the hot tub which side, side of side? you was i on yeah so no which were left and right i was in the pool okay so uh, left and right okay facing the hot tub Got yeah it. Uh, no, okay. objectively yes Do objective you know which left of, which one of us which was each place well so part of this is that you were both speaking at the exact same time so you mm. just found out that i was an only child yes. and at the exact same time as if it were in stereo you guys have this remarkable dynamic where you can actually speak alongside each other and be <laughs> complementary and better than the sum of the two parts and so one of you is speaking into my left ear one of you is speaking into my right ear and w you find out i'm an only child and one of you immediately <laughs> says oh you must be fucked up and the other one says oh that must be why all your birds died <laughs> and so my question to you is what is your relationship uh with oh, knowing <laughs> that your brother Wait, who said the birds died was it me <laughs> Of course it was you. Wait, why did your birth die? I because guess it's the only, only child. child. <laughs> it's the first thing that came to your mind. 
So my question is, why do you think your brother is your parents' favorite? Oh, that I'm is my a real plot twist. <laughs> I'm my parents' favorite. I think now you are. Well, listen, actually, I think well, now I am. <laughs> but I think you had a brief moment in the sun. I did. It was when you outed me as this pot smoker. <laughs> You <laughs> just needed. Okay, I just needed the light. My mom, you know, you always do middle child. <laughs> anyway, so my mother is 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 she's a wonderful woman. There's nothing wrong with her. All of also. those things are true. <laughs> she just has a tendency, like sometimes she doesn't quite connect the dots, you know. And she knows how much weed I smoke. I live in Oregon. It's legal. How much <laughs> weed I smoke. And I have I have always had a slight cough since childhood because I have like seasonal allergies and so I just every now and then I give a, I give a little cough. Yeah, but your car literally smelled like weed for like four years and no one thought anything of it. That's because I was the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how someone got in your car and was not like <laughs> because so Dad can't smell anything and I didn't let Mom in my car. That was a good choice. Um. But anyway, yeah. what was I talking about? We were talking about why Joe is the favorite child. But he's not. I'm the favorite. We all just agreed that I'm the favorite. But Joe used to be the favorite. Why did he used to be the favorite? Was there a reason? I think because it was just he, was he was always first. good. <laughs> no, he just there was literally no problems. He there was definitely an arc because you guys talked about him being the favorite. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's Absolutely. because we were both problem children because she was like that angry and feelings. I was sad, <laughs> and Joe was just like, oh no, I'm just gonna play video games. But you guys don't seem angry and sad now. How did it? How did you fix that? Therapy. Hey. <laughs> just kidding. I don't do that. That's true. I do a lot of therapy though. And it helps. Oh yeah. I think, like, each of my therapists, like, should be given a Nobel Peace Prize, if only for having to listen to me talk an hour. She's way So do we get one, too? No, you asked us to. That's true. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) You should pay us, actually, since we are in your invited guest speakers. Yes. Is that, do people, podcasters, pay their guests? (laughs) Isn't that, that like, a journalistic no-no? I mean, I I think bribing is, like... Mm. That no, that's actually super funny because we definitely give all of our seminar speakers money. That's different if you're a seminar speaker. Yeah, but this is ostensibly a, a, a journalistic enterprise, I would oh, say. So no, fair. no money will should change you're hands. Definitely, you're sharing your like expertise as opposed to like your Career. expertise. <laughs> yes, I'm sharing my expertise on being an insane person today. Social expertise is actually very important. I can tell you I have learned way more important things from listening to podcasts than I have from listening to any bullshit fucking professor who gets paid way too much to not care all about any of the students that they teach. So, it's true, right? What do you think? Um, why do you think podcasts work so well as uh, teaching? Because they're not tools. anything other than what they are. Yeah, that's, a really, that's a good point. <laughs> I like that. That's it's like it's like modern art <laughs> yeah well i just think anytime i don't know anytime you try to distill anything down to its simplest form you just lose too much of the context well i also feel like with like academia like i feel like you go in with this like love of the subject and this like love of like the thing and you want to like teach it and you want to like give that love to other people and then like academia as a system is just there to like beat the love of it out of you (laughs) well that's that's what happened to them and they're like the system must continue oh for sure but that's Um, like if you make it past undergrad oh yeah well not even an undergrad (laughs) well yeah Yeah, i mean just think about like core classes like those like big classes are literally there to like force people out yes yeah, I mean, we're just getting into the issues of capitalism <laughs> at this point. So before the weekend before grad school started for me, my PhD program, uh-huh. right? uh, uh, the school rented a little houseboat. It was a thing for the program. Oh. There was maybe only about 10, 10 people per year, right? So they rent a little houseboat, and you go around on the weekend in some lake. And there are oh, two, thi- so two things I noticed. You just go in a bunch of circles, which let that be a theme. Um, oh, and that's just so what, there's two things I noticed. One, um, 
when the boat was moving, and this boat was a large, large, large houseboat. It could only move like one mile an hour, like mm-hmm. very slowly, right? When, when it was moving, people felt a sense of momentum and forward velocity, and they were comfortable being still. But when the boat was anchored and perfectly still, everyone felt kind of like this anxiety that they had to start doing something, they had to start cleaning or doing errands or, or enjoying life or something, mm-hmm. you know, an activity. Productivity. And, and I went around because there, would, there were a bunch of people that had just graduated. There were maybe like two dozen or about a dozen on this boat that had just graduated and through all the different years. And I was like year zero, I hadn't started, right? And I went around and I asked everybody who had just graduated whether or not all things being equal, they would do it again. Oh, what did they say? Zero out of 12 said yes. Oh, same. Okay. Not a single person said yes. Despite the fact that one of the men was standing there next to his wife, whom he had met in graduate school. Were they all men? Oh. Ooh. No, no, you no. You said by one no of means. the men. Okay, just checking. One, one of, of the them. subset of the 12, which were. Which happened, happened to be a to man. Be which you had to specify to say wife, so we knew he was heterosexual. Right? That was a lot of yes. questions. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and let's just normalize it all. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> continue. What I realized <laughs> was that so there's there's two possible conclusions. One, uh, this is a terrible program. No one wants to be in it. That's two, a good conclusion. People are very they're terrible at counterfactuals. They're terrible at imagining their life that as it would have been otherwise. So you guys are in the middle of PhD programs. Well, no. I'm in the middle of being done with mine. <laughs> She's middle been Dr. Mancuso for several years. That's true. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm in the middle of my PhD You're in the middle program. of it. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, would you do it again, knowing what you know now? <sighs> okay. Do it again, as in get a PhD. Do it again, as in get the PhD at the same university. Mm get a PhD in the same research. Like, what do you mean do it again? Because I think every time anybody does anything, they learn a little bit about what they would like differently. See, that's a very reasonable answer, which was not the kind of answer I mostly received, which is, this is why counterfactuals are hard, right? Because yeah. you have to deal with all these kind of like nested conclusions and things. Yeah. But I wouldn't do counterfactuals if I, if, I were to, if I were to ask that question. Counterfactual being like against the facts of what actually happened. Yeah, alternate. Alternate versions. Okay. You, you, so you have to imagine that you did not do it and then imagine how life would have been different. And but would you, you want to? You can imagine anything. Yeah. Just I mean, because you can imagine. You can, you can always it. question what would have happened if, if you didn't do <laughs> something. If you did something, you would always question. Here we go. If you, yourself, if you had done something different. Like what, what would have happened if I had done this or this? this and there's any infinite number of possibilities among which you could have find or found your eternal happiness but the only one truth we know is what did happen and so we can look back upon our lives and just know <laughs> what we have learned and it can guide us in our future but we will never know what might have been because the possibilities are infinite <laughs> yeah i mean like that anyway said, <laughs> i think i would have done it again because i'm very happy about where i ended up i think uh yeah i don't know i think yeah the infinite trajectories my life could have taken would have been equally complicated and miserable and left me in probably about the same place because i think more of your experience is like about who you are as a person than what you're actually experiencing But the privilege of living a life as somebody who's in the position to pursue what they want is that at any point in time, you can literally change your mind. That's true. The only thing keeping you where you are is whatever you have projected, whatever uh, value you've projected onto certain aspects, right? So Yeah. Value or, like, blockers for moving, right? Because, like, you can lie to yourself that you're, like, stuck in this situation. Yeah. But, like, it's all in your brain. Like, imagine if you woke up tomorrow and forgot everything about who you are. You literally, at that point, can do anything. And so, like, you can imagine that even though you know all of these things about yourself, you can also, at any point, just change it. Yeah. (laughs) 
So in your lives right now, going back to the houseboat metaphor, you're the houseboats here. Uh, are you going one mile an hour and content to be at rest? Or are you at rest and feeling restless? I'm at rest and feeling so restless. I, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to be at rest in any type of way. Bish got applied for three different jobs, got <laughs> all of them. One's in Seattle, Washington. One's in San Francisco, California. The other one's in fucking Kalamazoo, Michigan. So, like, ask her what she wants. I have no idea. It's like... <laughs> They're all vastly different jobs, too. And I already had, like, a really lovely job. And I was just like, I don't know. I'm in quarantine. Let's shake it up. Yeah. But I think it's also hard when you have a lot of facets to your identity. <sighs> You have to leave your current job, or you, this is just you have three more options now. Oh, so I I ended up taking the one that's in San Francisco. So of the possibilities for like dramatically changing my life, I like had this dream that it was like quarantine, and at the other side of it, I was gonna like come out and be a totally different person. I don't know. You like said this thing a while ago when we were talking, where you were like talking about how you don't make like solid connections because like you feel like sometimes you wake up and you like don't know who you're gonna be and you like don't know if the people in your life are going to like accept that new version of yourself and I was I felt like I was on the precipice of one of those moments where I was like I just feel like I'm gonna wake up at the end of this and like not be the same person and like I don't know if I want this to be my life anymore so I like carved out all of these different possibilities I was like I could be like this person in Seattle or like this person in Michigan or I could like not change my life at all <laughs> but you could be any of those people in any of those places as well and also Absolutely. you'll go with you'll go with wherever you go right it's i mean like that's that the Lana thing yeah. Del Rey song. Oh, wait, yeah. there's another song too she's like what is it i moved to california but it's just a state of mind turns out anywhere you go you bring yourself it's not a lie <laughs> Lana, i wish i knew how to play iconic. it yeah <laughs> Too. Let's just take a break. We'll pause right here. I'll learn it. Yeah, we'll learn it and we'll come back. Yeah. That's not it. Okay, nope. Okay. I know. <laughs> I know how not to play it. It's still beautiful. Um, Every note you've played has been positive. Yeah. Like really? Yeah. You approve? Good. I haven't not yet figured out how to integrate the piano into this podcast. So hopefully we're going to look back at these early episodes and say, oh, look, that was before they figured out the piano. But I, I do think there is room for this kind of like musical highlights here and there. But I just have to find the confidence and the, the, the and, and see what works and what doesn't. So I'm sorry you guys are the guinea pigs a little bit. But we are just in like episode five of our podcast. I so. love guinea pigs. Guinea pigs are really cute. Yeah. And they make funny sounds. But also I feel like the confidence is key. Like if you don't believe it, we won't believe it. So my my our uh, my uh, mentor at Berkeley, who we keep bringing up in the podcast, is named after his concept called being in the world. Um, his brother was a also a professor in the cognitive science department, and he, I, all everyone thought we all thought that was weird and crazy that they both were you know PhDs and both became professors at Berkeley and. But I guess it's a thing that one sibling gets a PhD, so does the other. Like, what, is, how does, what does that depend on? Sibling rivalry. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> our, no, our, all of us. So our brother's a nuclear engineer, and yeah. basically we've just been trying to fucking top each other since. No, that's not true. I, I mean, it started in childhood. I just don't care about anything. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> education was just very much stressed on our family. Our so stressed. I used to sit in the back. Like our basement stairs and carve A plus into the wall with my fingernail. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's like not an exaggeration. That, that At least you didn't cut it. That was actually like. a weird thing. Well, she did it. Yeah. Um, but it was like you understand where it comes from because both of our pa like my dad was from an immigrant family and my mother from was where? from Italy and my mom was from like uh, it's Sicily. Uh, Palermo. You guys are fully Italian? No. no. <laughs> Our really grandpa bad. is. Yeah. Oh, okay. My dad's half, so we're a quarter. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, you got you have your Italian last name. Mancuso. Yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and so like. Between us, we almost make a whole Italian. Hey. <laughs> One third, two thirds. Wait, two, three, I don't three, understand. Three. Uh, a quarter I'm of half. Italian? I'm half. Oh, okay. Wait, well, you a quarter liar. of quarter half. That is a whole Italian. Yeah, that is. The math works. Uh-huh. Yeah. What math works? One quarter plus one quarter Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're an Italian. Yes. Do you have an Italian in you? Nope. Would you like to? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> should we go? Ass <laughs> a. Uh, yeah, and so, like, basically my mom's family was, like, 
all spread apart and did a bunch of different things. But my mom and I mean other uh, others of her siblings too. But she went to college on like basically being an, an athlete. Yes. So she was a D one athlete. And she got a scholarship to go to college, and like that's how she views herself as being like raised above her situation. So for her, she was like the way you have a good life is you get a good education. So it was like very much stressed from when we were young. And she just overstressed it maybe a little. What was the thing that she used or to say? Or were too receptive. <laughs> Grow up. Go, go, go to, go to school. Go to school. Get good grades. Go to college. Get, get married. Get a good job. Get a good married. job first. <laughs> yeah. But you got to get a good job, get married, and <laughs> then have kids. Was, then get married and have kids. Then get married. Yeah, kids. I don't know if she just thought we were all, like, precariously perched at being, like, teen moms. Joe included, I guess. Well, she didn't stress um, get married and then have kids, I think. She stressed the then. She, then. She was like, yeah. you got to get a good job and then get married, which and then very appreciative of, but also probably why both of us hate everyone. Yeah. Sometimes job when first. I'm falling asleep, that mantra just, like, plays in my head like a circus. Song. Oh, no, I don't. I definitely, every time it comes to mind, I'm like, that's such bullshit. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I was supposed to laugh back. No, that's okay. You guys have been doing great. You guys have never peaked it. It's very good. It's very good. Um, so, but yeah, that was true. And so yeah. Joe was just smart and lazy. He was so chill. I would she, like to ask, I would like to ask what inspired you to dedicate your lives to each of your chosen fields. Who said we did? You, well, enough to get a PhD. That's as much more commitment that's than most people do years. in a life. What do you mean? That's a lot. It's, I don't I did it for like I have trouble focusing for 10 minutes on something oh. so five years is a long time yeah I feel like you're like deeply passionate about science I just think it's so fucking interesting and cool and I just love understanding how things work and what I love basically the reason I'm a chemist and not a physicist is because physics is too small for me to understand there's too small of, for you to understand? It's too small and it's a lot of math and like mm. I need I need something that's kind of like more tangible to mm -hmm. like hold on to, which I say which is stupid because obviously the the, too the small. scale of an atom is too small for you to understand. But right. like but like we're still in whole particles, right? There's right. an electron, there's a proton, there's a nuclear nu Neutron. Nu a neutron. <laughs> neutron. I was like, wow, how do you say neutron without saying nucleus? Um and, and I can understand these because basically at that level, they are smaller versions of things that we can like macroscopically view. So you can view like atoms as like planets, you know, and you can view their like electrostatic interaction as a gravitational like pull between two, two um, planets because the electrostatic potential and the um, mathematical expression for gravity are exactly the same you just switch out what terms well i thought when you got to that level it wasn't at all like big things no, isn't okay. it doesn't quantum yeah, so there's, mechanics there's molecular like mechanics and then there's quantum mechanics so it's it is it's not at all like big things mathematically and so we have to do all these weird things so i work on um, metal organic frameworks which are crystalline materials um, and so a crystal is something that is periodic in some way, right? You can represent them with a unit cell that, if you tile this in space, constructs a whole, a whole bulk material. Um, and so we actually model them this way. But we use, so when you get into electron, because it's quantum mechanics, you have this wave particle duality. And so this is the whole thing about, like, it's different. Um, and so that's a whole thing. But that's just to say that while they mathematically are quantum mechanically um, defined, like their, their emotions and their behaviors, uh, I can, you can still like project or kind of like anthropomorphize their behavior in, into more contextualized um, ideas. Um, so basically anytime I'm thinking of it, it, within density functional theory, which is what I use as a computational chemist, we it's a static theory. So we're only we use what's called the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. Yes, the guy who made the atom bombs. Oh. Um, <laughs> Chill. And but basically, what that is not uh, is that um, the speed of electrons, because they're so small, is much, much faster than the speed of the nuclei that they are orbiting around. And so the Born-Oppenheimer approximation is that the nuclei are static. And so when we're looking at the electronic structure, all we're looking at is the behavior of the electrons. Um, 
And so I think... I and to what end? Like, why is all this being done by a private company? Because you're not well, in academia, right? I know, she I am in academia. Oh, you are? I'm in the middle of my PhD. Remember? You're in the middle of it. That's right. I'm in the Sorry. middle of it. She's a she's My duck, brain is though. not... This is the doctor. She She's the first doctor in our family. That's right. Which I'm jealous of because... <laughs> There's literally nothing I can do now. Now I get to be Doctor Van Cusa, but I was like, yeah, cool. You get the second one. Started. How are you going to replace? You know about? What, you know about? <laughs> what kind of firsts? Buzz Aldrin. Oh. He said, "I'm the." I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm the second man to walk to. on the moon. Kneel before me. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. That was a simultaneous <laughs> awkward drink to your joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, it was you too, know. It was too, they it was too apropos. No, no, I understand. Go basically, on. Basically, I'm the nobody g- remembers the second dude who does shit. Everybody's like, whatever. The first guy, we all know Lance Armstrong, but like. Lance Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, not that guy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> whatever. Nailed it. Anyway, yeah. No, I'm an educated lady. <laughs> no, but seriously, how are you going to one up her? Like, what's the plan? Okay, so so basically density functional theory, the reason people do it is because it solves the electronic structure of materials. And by doing that, we can predict what their properties will be. And we can also make hypothetical materials so we can make systematic changes to systems that exist and um, figure out if that will modify their properties in such a way, in the way that we expect and in the way that we want. Um, and so I use it, my research focuses around um, basically uh, catalytic function in MOFs and as well as conductivity, um, but basically all I look at is charge transport in MOFs, and so basically- In MOFs, did you say? MOFs, metal organic frameworks. Oh. Yes, yeah, in MOFs. they're basically like if you, you know connects, the like toy, they uh-huh. have like the little gears and then you <gasps> stick the connects. sticks in them. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe. Where, like, they they also like these have long plastic like spaghetti sticks and then they have these little connectors and you could they were like next gen Connect from Lego. Them. Oh, okay. They, I don't and then know next them. gen from that was like the magnetic balls oh, with like the sticks really that you could cool. stick on. Anyway, so you can think of moths like that. Is basically there's like a metal center and then there's organic linkers that like stick out from that based on the coordination geometry. And then you can build up these three dimensional frameworks. And so they're porous um, and they're really chemically tunable. And basically, we can put shit inside of them and do stuff to it, which can mean any number of things and so these are relatively new material they came out basically in the 90s um and so um obviously the first applications because they're porous and they have a high surface area where things like gas absorption um and they can do like selective gas absorption and this is really important because actually so actually in the united states 50 percent of our energy consumption is industrial separation processes so us using um using energy to either increase the temperature to distill um, mixtures or decreasing the temperature to do cryogenic distillations um, to separate out things specifically in the oil industry, like olefins and paraffins. And it doesn't really matter what those are, but basically, <laughs> basically they're just things that we use and you need to get them pure enough to use them for the applications that we want and that takes a lot of energy. And so MOFs are really cool because you can get selective absorption to them and you can do passive separations. So basically you can like flow your flue glass or your like mixture of whatever through a chamber containing your MOF and it will selectively absorb out um, either the things that you don't want or the things that you do want. And then you can, you know, extract those from your MOF. So are you most likely to go into work for oil and gas industry when you're done? Oh, fuck no. I'm not working for those monsters. Okay, so then what... (laughs) (laughs) I was wondering. So what would you put all your skills to use for in an I ideal world? I don't know. Maybe to go and sabotage I it. I want to have a nursery. She wants to be a botanist. I want to be a botanist. <laughs> I want to go back for my PhD in horticulture. No. That's what, yeah, she keeps um, pointing out all the plants, the like, scientific names of the plants in, in the house here and telling me that I haven't scientific. watered. It's literally, you're, we're in <laughs> Yucca California. Valley. Yeah. yeah, we're in Yucca Valley. So it's just like, th- what? <laughs> anyway. They're very beautiful. Do you ever take Tao this? doesn't wash water his plants enough. Doesn't wash his plants. Yeah, doesn't give him a good scrub down. Well, you got it if you got like a fill of fig or something. So this this uh, selective permeability, right? Do you ever do you ever do you ever take it at a larger scale and think about borders? Like, if you look at border, like even the Canadian U.S. or U.S. Mexico border, like charge builds up. In order to build charge, you need a semi permeable membrane, right? Mm. And you need just something separated on two sides of it. Do you ever think about how? Selective permeability is actually kind of ruining the world at a different scale. I don't think boundaries are real. So I definitely 100% 
I don't think boundaries Go of on. boundaries Wait, as, no. or borders as a tangible object. I simply think of them as imaginary lines that we've drawn on maps. And just because there's a social construct that refuses people crossing one way or another doesn't mean that's real. It just means that there's people stopping you from doing a thing that you should be able but to do. But that's the key to the, the moth gradient, right? Is selective permeability. Yes. No. But that's real. Selective absorption. absorption. Well, I feel like borders are real in the fact that, like, we police them, right? Like, as much as you, like, don't believe that they're, like, yeah. a real entity, like, they but that's exist like, in a tangible form. That's, like, anything. That's, like, like you're stronger than me. <laughs> so, like, if I wanted to come into your house and you're like, no, you could just fucking keep me out, you know? But, like, that doesn't mean... Or, like, even if you were in my house and I wanted to come back inside... <laughs> I could keep you out. Yeah, you yeah. could keep me out of my own home. That doesn't mean I don't have the right to fucking be there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, 100%. But, I mean, to the extent that borders are a, a tangibly policeable thing. Yeah, but pol we all know police are oh, fucked. Oh, yeah. 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 At this point. Yeah, I don't, I don't support that. <laughs> we're, like, this, we're 2020. We, got, we understand now. <laughs> we need to, like... Fuck the police. No, don't fuck them. They don't deserve no. your sex. <laughs> exactly. Defund them. Yeah. Yes. Demilitarize uh. them. Someone said that the police were all in one place. They said everyone should go fuck their wives and had to cuck the police. Well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I feel like they would be into that. They, yeah. <laughs> no, they're too toxic. Toxic That's masculine. Fair. Like, mm. they're like... They're like, no man could ever please my wife as much as Yeah, but maybe that's why they want to watch it, so they can feel better. Like, they just want to watch somebody that's worse than them and sex fuck their wives, so that later when they're fucking their wives, they feel better But then it. they, like, see her come, and they're like, oh, this backfired. <laughs> no, I have never seen that. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, wait, women can orgasm? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I feel like I recently asked somebody that on a date. Like, that was one of my screener questions. Wait, I was like, you asked? I what? asked them if they believed in the female orgasm because they just needed to know before I went on a second date with them. <laughs> Did they say no? Was there someone who would say not believe in it? No. I don't there know. There are people who don't believe in it. Really? I feel like you would be able to tell, though, as they're saying yes, that they were, like, hesitant. Like, as if they, you know, like, when you they're ask like, someone. like, I know you yeah. want me I didn't to even say know yes it was controversial. I don't think it's controversial. I just feel like there's so many, there's just so many, like, white bread vanilla men that are just, like, It's just yeah, so much I misinformation. In orgasm, but, like, I'm not going to get Dude, there's still men who think you pee <laughs> out of your vagina. You do not pee out of your vagina. Well, listen, maybe you don't. <laughs> don't listen to this bitch. Just because she's a doctor. Yeah. She's not a medical doctor. She don't know shit about your urethra. a medical doctor. We don't know. No, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So most men think you think that, that that it just comes out of the hole of the vagina. No, not most no. men. Just saying that there are men. They exist. That like like not in places where you wouldn't expect them to be, like <laughs> cities. Yeah, like you're like, oh, you. I'm sorry. You you've met a woman. You you. Okay. You've had you've had sex. Okay, but you think I'm sorry. You think we can? No, that's. Is that what your pee hole looks like? <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, it's a good time. <laughs> what other nightmares have you encountered dating, uh, being on the dating scene as oh, these God. amazing women? What's people your worst horror story of the last couple of years? So pupillometry is a science, and I feel like we need to zoom in and post and look at their pupils expanding because that question just unleashed a lot of hurt. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. This is. Is this triggering? A big question. I mean, yes, but also like, wow, is it one of my favorite things to talk about? Yeah, okay, let's, let's get to the meat of the matter. Go off. Go, Go. off. Go. Tell us. Wait, but it's... Because this is definitely a topic of our of our podcast. Yeah, okay. Sex well, and dating to be by fair, people who were all just trying to figure shit out. But. So you know how like most people want to date people who are a little not as not better than them, you know? Because that you then you have to feel bad about yourself and be like oh, i'm not worthy of that love so uh she's a little crazy and she's worked so much on it and she's great and wonderful and fabulous yeah. now but she knows where she was and for whatever reason thinks she's still there <laughs> and has to date people who are 
a little worse than that. I love so. to date narcissists. I just feel like it's so good for my emotions. <laughs> really, it's super healthy. <laughs> There's like no emotional manipulation occurring. <laughs> it's like yeah, um, they totally you know believe in her emotions that she physically feels. Yeah, so I, like, recently decided to date one of my friends, which I think we can all agree is a fantastic idea that never blows up in your face. So I have, like, a really tight-knit friend group, and they're all so lovely. And then I decided in quarantine that I was just going to, like, try to date one of them, who, like, very candidly, like, got out of a very long-term relationship, was like, I'm not in a place to date. And I was like, great, this seems like a perfect target. I would like it noted that <laughs> when she told me about him, I was like, don't fuck him. And then she was like, I was like, okay. I fucked him and I was like, oh my God, don't do it again. Please proceed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so anyways, I was like, I'm not going to do it. But then I was like at his house. And then she did. Yeah. Okay. This is the second time? Or this the first is time? the first time. Okay. The second time I was like, whatever, I've already ruined it. It's fine. <laughs> um. And, like, the whole thing was a mess, but I feel like the end of it is, like, the crux of the problem. So it was, like, it was, like, we were constantly back and forth. It was, like, I would be, like, I'm really into this. Like, let's do it. And he would be, like, no. Like, I just think it's a bad idea. And then I would, like, back off. And then he would be, like, no, wait. I, like, can't lose you. Like, that would ruin my life. And then, you know, you're, like, oh, like, romantic. Smooth. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a great idea. (laughs) Told her it wasn't. (laughs) And so... This was, like, when I was, like, okay, I'm going to change my life and, like, apply to jobs in different cities, and I'm just going to, like, run away from this problem that I've created. Um, Because I'm really good at conflict resolution. Uh, And so I, like, went home as, like, a pregame for, like, abandoning my life. Um, She almost did it. I almost did it. That's why she has a job in Michigan right now. I mean, she doesn't, like, but she could. I could. Yeah. And so, like, while I was home, we were, like, we're not going to date. Like, this is a horrible idea. We had, like, broken up, and I, like, went through Even this, Even though like, she had a poetry book that she was annotating about all of her strong, loving emotions <laughs> for this man. Oh, I was having a rough time. It was uh, a lot. Psychologically during quarantine. Yeah, I, like, left this, like, whole breakup box with, like, a 15-page letter, and I made this, like, little needle-felted thing, and, like... Put all of these things from our, like, relationship into it. Because um, I read a book about this once. It was a fiction book. Did and you I set it on thought, fire? No, but I should have. That would have been great. How did the letter on? start? How did the letter start? With, like, an anecdote? <sighs> I think the intro sentence yeah. is always the hardest. The intro sentence is always the hardest. I feel like I started it with, like, something really, like, what are the cliché? Yeah, like melodramatic and cliche, which was like, I didn't think it would come to this. I feel like it was the essence of it. It was like an AOL, like away message. Yes. <laughs> I was vague vlogging at the person I was actually writing to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and like it like went through all of these different stages. And at the end, I had like a playlist, like a handwritten playlist that I never created on like Spotify or like made a thing. And like next to each of the songs, I like wrote deeply about like why this song made me think about him as a person. Oh. And then did you set that on fire? No, I gave it to him and he has a physical copy. Why? Of it. It's like a permanent testament to my insanity. Jordan, I did he respond? It. Oh, he did. Res- he responded. Yes. Okay. This was right before I left. We were like, we're done. It's not happening. We'll never see each other again. I'm leaving. I'm moving. This is like after he. Again. So like. Wait, you didn't even go into the whole... Oh, my God. We're getting there. We're getting there. <gasps> no, wait. Yeah, I forgot the part where I made this box when we, like, broke up. He, like, rode his motorcycle over to my house. And then we, like, had this fight. And, like, the end of the fight was punctuated by me throwing my journal so hard at my gate that my neighbor came out. That was the first time. That was the first breakup. Yeah, and that's when I wrote all of this. And then after I left this box on his, like, porch, he, like, came back and was like, I think we should be together. Oh, I didn't know what the <laughs> box was the reason, bitch. Oh, my God. This is your fault. No, okay, yeah. So then I, like, flew home, and we were, like, you know, we were, like, flirting with the idea, going back and forth. And, like, a week before I came back to San Francisco, he was, like, you know, I think that we should try it. I think we should just, like, be together. And so I get back, and he, like, made this whole romantic thing. I, like, let him borrow my car while I was gone, and he put, like, a scavenger hunt of, like, notes inside the car. And, like, each of the notes, like, there was one in the mirror about, like, how he sees me, and it was, like... <laughs> You know, cute shit like that. 
Uh, <laughs> And he like put together this like dinner with like Why candles. Why do douchey dudes do cute shit? Dude, I know. What the fuck is with that? Off. It's because it's like be douchey or be cute. Into, like, oh, I know. I guess that in itself is douchey. Yes. <sighs> and so we like have this wonderful like romantic reunion, and it's like I wake up the next morning and just like something like you know when you like wake up and you're like something has changed. Like you just like wake up and you can like feel it in the air because she's a witch. I am a witch. I'm like which witch is which? This witch is witch. Huh. Uh, sandwich. <laughs> and I, I like woke up and I was like, I gotta go. Like I need to go home. And he was like, No, like you should stay and we'll like spend the day together. And then I don't remember what happened. Like something happened with his work, and he like was upset. And like we were supposed to go camping or something that weekend, and we hadn't planned it. And I was like, Okay, well, like as an activity, do you want to like plan our camping trip this weekend? And he was like, Oh no, like my friend texted me and I'm gonna go golfing this weekend instead and I was just like you know what <laughs> I have to leave <laughs> so I just like got all of my stuff together and like packed it because I'm not I'm not good at confrontation or like <laughs> being emotionally communicative about she's hella happening. passive aggressive I'm is what so she's saying petty. she's the most petty. yeah so I was like oh you did this like mean thing that made me feel bad I'm just gonna leave and like not talk to you for three weeks um and so like as I'm walking out the door he's like really you're just gonna like leave like that and I was like well, yeah um <laughs> and then he like somehow convinces me to come back inside and like essentially like admits to me that he did not make plans with this friend he was just doing it because he was having a bad day and like wanted me to feel bad and then went into this like pontification about how he like that's who he is as like a person he like gets off on emotional manipulation and i was like truly I said this to my friend Dan the other day. I was like, I think that this whole situation was like a two year long like emotional manipulation where he saw me and was like, I will emotionally manipulate you into loving me so that I can feel validated in my existence. And then once I get the thing, I will get rid of it because I don't actually want you as a person. I just want to know that you would love me. And that's the type of person I date. <laughs> But nope. the point was, he literally did this whole thing to get her to date him, and then the next day was like, I want to date you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and no gift box the second time. No, after that time, I literally ended it by screaming from the bottom of the stairs up into his apartment. He was like, I'm not doing this. Like, my neighbors will hear you. And I was like, they'll hear me inside because of the volume of my screaming. <sighs> so I just screamed it from the bottom of the stairs. I was like, never, like, text me or call me or email me again. And then I, like, had had a glass of wine, so I had to go sit in my car for, like, a couple of hours. And just, like, She's just so drive. scared about drinking oh. and driving, even though... <laughs> it's a good thing to be scared No, it's yes. a good thing to be scared about, but homie, if you drink one glass of wine... I'm such a lightweight. Okay, that's good. I guess that's good. But... So, yeah, then I was just, like, sitting in my car outside, waiting to be sober enough to drive home. Um, and then he emailed me, like, two days later. But he didn't answer it. And you haven't answered since. I haven't answered since, but I did. So this has a happy ending. Mm. <laughs> no. But the, so, what did okay, you do? So, so that day. So that was a day, right? They. He was like, I'm going to get back with you next day. Just kidding. I'm not going to do this. I'm not ready for a committed relationship or whatever. A week later, moved in with his fucking ex-girlfriend. Yeah. What? Hot what? Okay, but you knew this stuff oh, I feel was like, like this. I feel like I feel like this plot twist was coming. I feel like it was coming all along. And so the real question here is, why do we continue to fucking emotionally invest in men who do that? Have no capacity <laughs> for any type of emotional connection. Not even emotional connection. Human decency is something I would say. That is I would a say fair human point. decency. Yeah. Just like base level. Just like be I would like front. to be respected. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm too honest. I've been told so. But I don't think that's a problem. Yeah. I I've always told the... honesty is the best policy. <laughs> I think that's a perfect uh, end point for this <laughs> episode. <laughs> but I think we should do more. <laughs> You're here till Wednesday, right? We can do another one tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your, your dating oh no 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 <laughs> thanks so much guys that was wonderfully anarchic um and hopefully <laughs> communicative of some amazing little 
I don't know even know what to say. It's perfect. <laughs> You're so rarely Goodbye. speechless. I'm speechless. You <laughs> left me speechless. Signing out. <laughs>